there to save you. Amen. Oh! 
Amen. Go run and tell somebody this God is too good. Get the app. Go run and tell somebody this God. And if you are not doing anything in the studio, get into the main auditorium. Because after the handshaking, I am coming there myself. If you have no business in the studio, move out of the studios.
set my feet upon the rock. I'm standing in His righteousness. He took away my sin and shame. Give me a brand new name. He's the love and the redeemed. Oh, 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 look how He turned my life around. Made me a shining light. His glory to reveal. I will worship Him forever. I don't know about you, but me. I tell me. God's heart. He loved me when I didn't care. Was precious, so I came running back into his arms. Look how he turned my life around. Made me a shining star. His glory. Today, God will use you as his testimony. If anybody wants to see the goodness of God, they will look at your life. They will look at your life. And you tell them, I will worship you. I will worship you. Worship like this, I begin to think about how good he has been to me. I begin to look at how many people are dead and I'm still alive. He has blessed me not because I am a perfect person, but because of his mercy and his grace. It's not because I am a giver, but because he gave to me. Running 
Look how, look how he turned my life around, made me. Worship. People don't understand why we cry and we worship because when we look at him, he has been good. In spite of our weaknesses, in spite of our shame, even in times that we fail him, he has never failed. He has never failed. Everybody worship him. Keep playing. Worship him. Worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We declare your majesty. Come on, keep worshiping him. Keep worshiping him. Maybe you don't have everything to worship, but I do. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, uh-huh. 
thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. the kidneys and drop on rise I'll head stay to ooh, 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 ooh. I'll hasten to his throne let's sing it I love the Lord I love him. He heard my cry and pitied every wrong. Long as I live, no matter the trouble that comes. No matter the pain that comes Love and let's take our seats. Amen. 
Amen. Be a shining light. That is the topic of our message this morning. So let's open our Bibles to the book of Daniel chapter 12. Only verse number three. Daniel chapter 12, only verse number three. Now we just sang a song that was saying that I will love him forever, worship him forever because this God is too good. He made me a shining light. You see, there are different kinds of light. There are lights and there are shining lights. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. I repeat, there are lights and there are shining lights. Let's see, those who are wise shall, um, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness are the stars forever and ever. Now, we are in the month of missions and evangelism. Can I hear an amen? amen? And I've seen Christians suffer. Go through all kinds of trouble to make their life better. And sometimes people think that some people are more blessed than others. Yesterday, somebody came to meet me in the office. And when a person was talking to me about her problem, how she was born in idolatry, taken from a shrine and so on and so forth, I lost track of all that she was saying. Because the Holy Spirit carried me to a match between Ghana and Germany. And I was telling myself, hey, hey put yourself together. You are, you are supposed to be doing counseling. So I quickly, they were playing World Cup, so I quickly put off the sound from the TV so that this, I can listen to this person very well. And when the person left, then the Holy Ghost said to me, who said it was the TV that was speaking to you? I was speaking to you. I said, Lord, what has Ghana and Germany playing football got to do with this human situation? He, then he told me, the day Ghana and Germany were playing, I hear that match was one of the best in that World Cup. I don't know if you remember that World Cup. There were two Ghanaians who were supposed to be in the match, or who played, I don't know. They were all called Boati. One was called Jerome, and the other one was called what? Calvin. One decided to play for Ghana, and one decided to play for Germany. What a nice one. The one who decided to play for Ghana was played or didn't play, or I forgot him, but his nation lost because they were very corrupt. But one person decided, even though he was a Ghanaian, to play for Germany. And since he decided to play for Germany, he has won a lot of awards. World Cup, European Cup, and so on and so forth. Then the Lord said, these are two Ghanaians. But one decided to use first uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 to work. And one decided to stay in the same place he was birthed. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, the Bible said, he has delivered us from the powers of darkness and conveyed, I like the actual King James Version, said, and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now this other guy who decided to pray for Germany, has won laurels. 
The one who decided to play for Ghana and even come and complain about the corruption was booted out of the team. What a world. So I asked the Lord, what are you trying to tell me? He said, hear me. There are many people who complain that they are born in curses. They are born in sin. The root of their life is so demonic. But their life does not speak for where I have taken them to. Their life speak for where they still think they came from. And I said, Lord, I still don't understand. He said, there are two kingdoms that operate in this world. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. You cannot be in the two kingdoms. Now, one of the signs that you are not in the kingdom of darkness or you are not in the kingdom of light is who you decide to vouch for. Let's imagine that the day Ghana and Germany played, the Ghanaian who has decided to become a German decided to let our defenders pass by him so that we score. Germany would not have won. Or we would have beaten them mercilessly. That much was it a draw? Or they scored us? They scored us? 2-2. Two, two. Wonderful. And the pillar at the back was this black guy. Fighting everything to make sure that his nation that he has decided to vouch for wins. There are so many people the Lord told me who are in church but are never fighting for the church. They are against the church they belong to. If you are there right now and you go to Facebook and say, pastors taking church money, you will like. You will even share and you will comment. God have mercy on the church. Oh. Three of us. But if you see a pastor who has built a mega church building and put a like it, you bypass. I've said this thing before and recently I heard a man of God say it. That one day I had an encounter with an MP who was saying that pastors are thieves. We take people's money and we become rich. And I told this MP that look at our politicians. They take all kinds of taxes. Street tax, vendor tax, car tax, toll booth tax, all those tax. And yet our country is still the same. Look at the mega churches pastors have built with offerings. If our chiefs were also who were collecting lampoo tax and levies, a pastor can leave a town and go to another town and build a mega auditorium there. Two of us. And the chief in that town has never built anything. So, why can a pastor have so much influence to be able to build mega things? And government and uh, chiefs have their lives still the same. And yet, they will say that the pastor is rather the thief. And come and see the kingdom of light person supporting it. Then he told me that it will interest you to know that Anybody who does not win a soul supports the kingdom of darkness and is part of the kingdom of darkness. He said, a lot of people are benefiting in generational curses because they don't know that whenever you decide to become a soul winner, to bring somebody to God, you are automatically telling the gods, the fetish, and those at your background that you are no more part of them. You are now part of the kingdom of light. When you cannot win a simple 
your soul to God. You cannot say you are part. When we were young, there was a statement we used to make, depopulating hell to populate heaven. Depopulating hell. Hell has opened his mouth. Oh. You think it's not in the Bible? Let me take you there before you, 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 uh, you, you begin to judge me. Go to Isaiah. Which of the Isaiah cry? I think chapter 5. Mm -hmm. Hell has opened his mouth. And when hell opens his mouth, it doesn't swallow ordinary people. He swallows honorable men. Look at somebody and say, are you swallowed up? Years ago, some of you never thought you become great. Amen. Amen. Until you were saved. Isaiah chapter 5, give me verse number 14. Therefore, give me New King James. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. To do what? To swallow their glory, their mud, and their pomp, and who is jubilant. So, when hell opens his mouth, it opens his mouth to swallow great people. How many of you were not born again some time ago? Oh, let me see. Yeah. All the great things you have acquired today, it's not the fact that you were born again. It will have been in the mouth of hell. Hell has opened his mouth to do what? Open and large itself, open her mouth to beyond measure. The way beyond measure means a bros who is sitting only abundantly. Who is he swallowing? Let me ask you a question. How many people have you employed in your company? Cut the moment here. Eh? 20. Assuming you have not broken through, this 20 would have been unemployed. That's right. So when God saved you, he didn't just save you. And let me tell you, 20 Christ, you are coming to now open more. So, so when God saved you, he had all the people you are feeding. Some too, they have a wife and they have children. They were all part of the reason why God decided to make you great. Now, whenever you decide not to win a soul to God, you are just trying to tell God that you are not part of his kingdom. You see, when you are part of a thing, you love to talk about it. Three of us. Have this World Cup, Ghana didn't go. But I love my Nigerian brothers. Ha! Huh. They knew very well that Messi has charged. They knew very well that Argentina was bruised. And by the statistics, Nigeria will not win. But come and see talk. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Come and see the way they were talking. Some of them even went, because some Niger Ghanaians were even saying that Nigeria will lose and come and see insult on social media. Because you don't fight against your team if even they are losing. When even Nigeria lost, they have come to give the reasons they were cheated. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, that one there is true. You see, but that is, listen, whether it is true or not, that is how you fight for your nation. The fact that your nation lose doesn't mean you go there and say, oh, we were born to lose. When you hear anybody say, that, oh, we were born to lose, you should know that this person is not an original Nigerian. No original Nigerian will really say, that, oh, we were born to lose. I knew you were losing. Then you are not a real citizen of the country. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. 
It's like your country is going to war. And you stay there and say, oh, this will lose. It's your mama, your father, your uncle, that who is going to lose and die. Yes, the one who are going to war is your family. So even though you know they will lose, you will fast. You will pray, true or false. You will do everything to make sure that they go and win. Because they are not going to fight just for their sake. They are going to fight for the interests of your kingdom. Now, it will interest you to know that there are so many Christians who have never, ever spoken to a soul in their life. So sometimes this enemy, the devil, wonders which side you belong to. And the Lord was telling me, Francis, if this Ghanaian born decided to be a German, even though he was a Ghanaian, let's assume, and I believe this thing very well, that there is, I believe it, I believe there is a curse on Ghana black stars. I'm a Ghanaian, I'm saying, even though I know it, when we are going to play, I say we'll win. Even though I know when we are going to pass it, no weapon fashion against them shall prosper. I believe there is a curse. And I believe the answer to the curse is simple. Should I tell you? All the old people who won caps for us, that they promised them buildings and houses and cars, they should give it to them. If they won't celebrate them, if even they are dead, their children are alive, they should give it to them. Else, we will go on and we will return back to zero. Me too, I've said some, but let's go on. You can take your seat. Amen? Amen. Even though I know this, where we are going, I am saying, ah. but this Ghanaian is a Ghanaian. He decided to join a team, change his nationality to a German. Goes to the World Cup. He wins the World Cup. He's still a Ghanaian. You can still come from Besiase, Kumewu, Busumase. No, it's Busumase. Gods, under the gods. And by your location in Christ, you can still win caps. and demons and by your association with the kingdom of God you will prevail and make it but the problem is that you don't go and join the team and when you join the team you still say hmm, I used to be a Ghana man and today Ghana and Germany is playing the penalty you stand there and you kick it to throw not even over all You have to play penalty. The keeper is here. He said, yeah, I'm going to score my own country. So if you are a witch, eh, and you have to cast at a witch, and because you have to cast at, you divert it and kick it to throw. You are not really a Christian yet. But the day you score against your own country, then the people will know that Kai Akwan was The day you defend a goal being scored against your country, then the nationals will know that this person is still using a local Ghanaian name. But his heart has really changed. Now, the, a lot of us, since you left the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, you are still playing against the kingdom of light. To compare. Okay. Let me tell you a, a story. I can tell you that you can easily break. A lot of people say, I'm going for deliverance. And I laugh. And what is deliverance? You go and the pastor will call you. And say, I see 40 witches in your family. 
28 cores. Before you were born, they carved you from a tree. And he said, Pastor, it is true. And they will lay hands on you. And all the demons say, I'm going, you know, I'm going, you know, and they will go. But you finish and you are still poor. Because your actions and inactions can determine whether you have changed or not. When you become born again and you start preaching the word of God, let me tell you, James, no, let's use this scripture first. Romans chapter 1, verse number 16. When you become born again and you start preaching the word of God, automatically you start flowing in the power of God. Now, are, you, are we there? Now, most people who become born again say they are ashamed. You are a failure. You are a new It is, you say, Pastor, a whole me. It's embarrassing. For me to call someone and say, Hello, how are you? Please, are you born again? Pastor, it's really embarrassing. Yeah. It's embarrassing. Now, one day Jesus said, Whosoever is ashamed of me before men, look for that scripture for me, I'll be ashamed of him before my father. So I can see Jesus sitting by the father. This is the father. And watching every one of us. And you meet a soul. And you say that, ah, I come with them, hold on. This person smells at me at my level and his level. Then Jesus will tell God, you see this person, my level and his level, we don't agree. Because I've already told you that whatever you do to God, he will do to you. And I brought you the scripture to prove it. I've forgotten that one too. Oh, amen? amen. Your amen is not good at all. Yeah. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Now, the power of God comes from preaching the gospel, not preaching mathematics. Not preaching and telling somebody that the way you are a beautiful girl, if you serve God, you will make it in life. That is not gospel. The gospel is not telling somebody the way you were a banker. If you really were working for God, you become a bank manager. That is motivational speaking. So most of us, we go to people and they don't change. The gospel is not telling somebody, if you come to church, I'll give you a shoe. Have you not seen people who go to rallies, political party rallies, and they are wearing NDC t-shirt, MBP t-shirt, they go to the NDC one, when they finish, they are going to the next one, they remove. Look of you on the And the day of voting, they will look at t-shirt. Oh, I'll tell you no lie. That is why people will stand for election. And by the end of the election, they vote. Their own constituency, they have five children, a wife, two girlfriends. But they go and vote and they have one vote. Only they voted themselves. They are two girlfriends, their wife, and their five children did not vote them. I didn't mention anybody's name. Even that one, he's lucky because he himself was so confused that he nearly made a double vote. So they could have easily discounted it. But because of the favor of God, he got one. Most of us sit in church, we see people who we know. Hey, look at her sleeping. Wake up! Yeah. Where was I? We know people who can go to hell. You see somebody, see that this one, and 
they will tell you, are you a judge? No, you are not a judge, but the one inside you is telling you that this person's, this person's lifestyle is born for hell. And you don't go to the person and go and tell the person you are going to hell. You go to the person and tell the person, this is the reason why Jesus died for you. Nobody can forgive you your sins. Let me tell you something. If you go to heaven, eh, something will happen. Interesting. They will ask you, are you a sinner? If you say yes, then the next question will be, did you ask Jesus to forgive you your sins? He said, yes. Then he said, did you trust him to keep you safe? He said, yes. They said, then you are qualified to go. Then there's another group that will come. Are you a sinner? No. <laughs> Have you ever said no? Are you perfect? Yes. What is perfection? Anybody who has not done anything wrong before. Okay, let's do a survey. If you are here and you have lied before, you have lied before. Let me show your hands up. Because the book of Revelations 19 said all liars will go to hell. So if you are here and you have lied before, me, I'm number one. I told my daughter I am coming, but I didn't come. <laughs> I said, I'm coming right now. I'm going to buy you food. But no, I was going to the office. So if you are here, you have lied before. Let me show your hands up. Ha. So all of us will not go to heaven. Okay, number two. The Bible says anybody who has looked at a woman lustfully in his heart will go to hell. Will not hell. If you have seen a woman and you say, hey, sh- but the man. Hey. Or you have seen a man say, hey, this pack. Hmm. Let me see your hands up. Hey. Why you have not done? <laughs> hey, I don't got it. Let's read. But I say to you that whosoever looks at a woman to last for her has already committed adultery with her. Hey, hey, wait, oh, I smile. So, how many of you think that you, you, you this sin you have committed before? So. So all of us will go to heaven. How many of you here have trusted Jesus to forgive you of this sin? So you will go. How many of you don't need Jesus to forgive you? But let me just go to the streets and there are people who will tell you they don't care. They, they don't even look at it and last too. They go for it. So people, I'll come back to uh, Romans 1.19, um, Romans um, chapter 1.16. Give us 10.30. There are some people who think that because they are good, they will go to heaven. You know good they give to the poor, they give to the needy, they, they, they don't go to the club, they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't commit adultery. As for, more, as for them, if they compare themselves to being some pastors, they are even better. Okay. Do you know that Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, the Bible said was an alms giver. Was a person, last week I was preaching on it, eh? was somebody who prayed daily. He doesn't even miss prayer meetings. But two things he lacked. And God had to go and speak to Peter in a dream. Now go to Cornelius because one, his arms giving, his giving has come as a memorial. But there are certain things he lacked. He must accept Jesus Christ. Are you, are you with me? And he must also receive the Holy Ghost. So in Acts chapter 10, give me verse 38, please. This is how God, even Jesus, so I'll call it the five characteristics of every Christian. You must have it. If you don't have it, your Christian virtues is questionable. This is how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, number one, with Holy Ghost. Every Christian must have Holy Ghost. If you say you are a Christian, you don't have Holy Ghost, you have evil ghost. 
Actually, if, if you know, give me the King James Version, because I don't want the word ghost. It's not, it's the Holy Spirit. You must have the Holy Spirit. Some of the Holy Spirit. You must first have the Holy Spirit. Now, David said in Psalm 51 that give me a right spirit because there's a possibility of having a wrong spirit. When you have a wrong spirit, that is when you sleep with Bessie and Bessie, but you don't feel it. You kill the husband, you don't feel it. Because yeah, the spirit in you is wrong. Now, whenever you talk to somebody, he doesn't see that anything he has done is wrong. That is somebody who the devil is inside. Whenever you sin and you feel it, it means the Holy Ghost is inside you. Whenever you are about to sin and you feel it, it means that the Holy Ghost is inside you. When you do it and you don't feel anything, people take knife and they kill their brother. And they turn the knife like this and they look at their face and... And say, then they move. They are comfortable because an evil spirit is inside them. So David said, Create me a clean and renew what? A right spirit. Look at some of the way spirit you have. Some say, I need a right spirit. But see, David wanted the Holy Spirit. So this is how God anointed Jesus. With the Holy Spirit. Some say Holy Spirit. I have someone sitting by you. Do you have Holy Spirit? Well, let me tell you this. There are so many people who give their life to Jesus. And they say, I believe in Jesus. But they have never received his spirit. That is why evil spirit can still trouble you. Because the Bible said, nobody can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So the only one who allow demons not to stay inside you again is Holy Spirit. So if you go to church and pastor cast that, you demon of poverty, go. Demon of lust, go. Demon of bread, go. And the Holy Spirit does not replace. The Bible said they will go. But they will go around and come back again. Come and see that the place is swept clean. Then they are nice people. They don't want to stay there alone because they have been cast out. They will go and look for seven more powerful demons that are stronger than them so that they can occupy their place. And the person, the, way, the problem of that person becomes worse. Somebody say, since I started serving God, things have become worse and worse. They keep becoming worse and worse. They are becoming worse and worse because after the demons were cast out, you did not allow the Holy Spirit. They tell you, come for new convert class, you won't come. But you can go and watch football. And watch penalties. See, I don't have money. But they will go watch the football and walk from Abeka to Dansoma. Oh, yes. You don't know. People walk. And I see them. One day, I got to the house, not when my wife had sent me a message on my phone. And I saw some people were arguing by the roadside on football. When I got home, my wife said, oh, I sent you a message to buy. I said, I didn't check. So I let me go back. I went all the way from SEC. Got to Fenton. Uh, Wager. The guy was still going. Walk from wager inside to SEC inside to watch football match. So I, I, I'm inquisitive. I called this guy. I said, bro, is it you I saw at the place? He said, yes. <laughs> I said, how was the match? Said, Charlie, today the score was bad, <laughs> I said, why are you walking? He said, I don't get money. <laughs> then I took an advantage to preach the gospel to this guy. But I was surprised. That this guy can walk from Wager inside to SEC near the West Hills Mall. Go and watch football. Loose and still walk back. <laughs> oh, you are laughing. How many of you have done that before? God bless you. 
You, you say you've not done. Let me. How many of you have also walked to go and look for your girl and your girl didn't come out? <laughs> but there's a wise little pastor Daniel's hand. <laughs> or you had half gallon fuel. You drove all the way to visit this girl. And when you were coming, your return journey, it was only free. The ladies are laughing. How many ladies have used your last money to cook for this guy before? Let me see your hands up. I said, I'm waiting. Now. Let me see your hands up. Last money. Hey, I'll start calling names. Who? Your last money to cook for a guy before. Let me see your hands up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You will go to heaven. It means you have trusted God to forgive you your sins. Those who didn't lift up your hands, I'm afraid for you. Use okay, this one I'll see who will lift that. Your last money to go and do your hair, and the guy didn't say you are looking nice. <laughs> you mind me. Wait, Jack, wait, Jack. You are you, you frown your face like someone said, Lord, mercy. But you see, we become born again. And we don't like the Holy Ghost. That's why we don't go winning souls. Where are you going? I'm preaching now. So go back. Where was I? You see, the one that will make you move towards the things of God is the Holy Spirit. That is where you can see a soul and you cannot feel anything for the soul because you don't have the Holy Spirit. This how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, number one, with power. A Christian who does not have Holy Ghost power is not a Christian. Any Christian who cannot cast out an evil spirit has an evil spirit. So a sign that you have the Holy Spirit is how you cast out spirits. So if you say you became born again, you have not even cast out a cockroach. Someone say power. power. As one is when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall be what? You shall receive what? Power. As a sign that you have the Holy Spirit. It's your ability to cast out devils. Look at somebody sitting by you and say, have you cast out a devil before? <laughs> Common headache. <laughs> Pastor, my head is paining me. Can you pray for me? Hey, be you. you are in a house. Somebody is sick. You are standing there and say, if my pastor was here, you were a disgrace to the kingdom of God. This, I'm looking for this person. He's not here. I was watching TV yesterday. And a church member. Oh, they asked the church member on TV. How many plagues did God use to fight Israel? The church member was doing this. The church member is an instrumentalist. Life TV. I'm so good. Pass a bishop. I said, good Lord. <laughs> See, they are looking for the instrumentalist who is not here. <laughs> if he was here, I would have called him here. But he's not here. <laughs> Some say power. power. Say power. power. Say power. power. Say power. power. You should, if you say you go to bridge ministries, and you are there, and they call you that your neighbor, somebody is dying. You say, Ah, you should have called me. Why is that person? They say, Ah, with your rasta hair, with your jeans started. He said, Uh huh. You think God doesn't. I go to church. I'm at bridge ministry. Bring the. I remember when I got to Malam, right in front of your house, Malam, Agri Memorial. I was there one day. I did, me when I went to, I didn't do my journalism. When I said bridge, at Malam, I didn't do my journalism. Ask them. I walk every day. I walk. 
in the area like this. They, they used to call me Nigeria pastor because I didn't have money, so my hair was santo. Yeah, when you have santo, it takes a long time for your hair to grow. <laughs> One day, I was there, they came to tell me that somebody had malaria and they put him in a hospital and they were giving him injection and the guy has gone to drink, so he's dead. And the hospital in the area have rejected the body. And so they have put the body, they brought the, a car and dropped the body in front of the house and they were crying. They came to call me. Hallelujah. I said, God, don't need you. Shall we you? Every trouble in your neighbor is an opportunity. Every trouble in your neighborhood is an opportunity to show your Christ like nature. I got dead, they were crying. Ah, it was also uh, where Rukaides were staying. Did they all, it was opposite to Rukaides' place. Okay. Now, see how these people are in church. I walked there. When I went, they were all crying. Everybody leave because it's in the Bible. When Jesus had to pray for death, he sacked everybody except Peter, James, and John. So everybody was crying, go. Then I asked, What is this guy's name? I laid hands and I called his name. One, he didn't mind me. Two, he didn't mind me. Then I asked him again, what is his full name? They mentioned his full name. Then I went back. I didn't even touch him. I mentioned his full name. Up! The guy just got up, vomited the things out. And I said, in the Bible, Jesus said, give him something to eat. I said, give him something to eat. Amen. Then I went to my house. Sat down. The neighbors were coming one by one. <laughs> Hallelujah. When this one comes, I said, you must be born again. As more will follow. You must be born. Hey, they were just giving their life to Jesus. Look, come at them, sir. I will tell you, when I got, most people who followed me today, they will tell you that, let me tell you, when a Christian doesn't walk in power, you are useless. The kingdom, first Corinthians 2, I forgot, 20 or so, 420. He said, the kingdom of God is not in words, but it's in the demonstration of power. He said, a Christian must demonstrate power. Some say power. power. Look, let me tell you this. It's not, now I have become cool a bit because I am pastoring. You see, pastoring, I say, pastoring of all the five, four minutes, I think the difficult one is pastoring. Because you need a heart to pastor. Oh, like, you can't misbehave like that. I'll finish you. Do, do you remember the lady who stood in church and went all night messed up with me? By morning, she was mad. They came to tell me, and I said, God, have mercy. I had two, three days, now she's okay. I, I don't go like that. So when you walk in power, people should even be afraid to talk to you by heart. Because a man of power, master, let me tell you this, professors, magicians, read Acts chapter 8. They don't fear where to. They read by Bible. But so when you start demonstrating the power, they don't even care if you are not educated. But there are so many Christians today, I remember I was, when I got to Malam, somebody came to me with a, they had a printing house. It doesn't work. They have done everything. The printing machine doesn't work. Everything. So I gave them oil. I said, go and pour this oil. They said, ah, our machine, we don't use this type of oil. I said, Master, me, I say, use this oil. Yeah. They put the oil in, chono, chono, boom, the whole factory, everything is back. Everyone in the factory had to come and see me. So if you say you are a Christian, you must have the Holy Ghost. Some say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Number two, you must have power. power. Number three, Acts 10, 38. Who went about doing good? So doing good is just one of five. Me good. Doing good will not take you to heaven. So when you meet people and you are telling them to give their life to Jesus, they say, me, I do good. Tell them, do you have Holy Ghost? Do you have power? 
you sleep and witches are taking your head to play football. Oh, you're riding it. Me, my head. You want to use my head? Oh, you're riding it. There are some people, if you go to witch camp and you go and tell them, I want to ask Malam, a lady became born again and his boyfriend was a former footballer, a Muslim, and the lady says he won't follow this Muslim again. So this guy took my picture. First, he sent me rice and some things to eat. I didn't eat a dash because me, I'm wise. When he saw the thing, he took my picture to the juju place. As soon as the picture landed, the juju man told him that if you want me and you to die, take this picture from here. Picture. Picture. These days you get up. I remember when I was growing up, my mom told me, be careful with posters. Because when you go and paste your pictures everywhere, people can. Now these days people post everything you paste on social media. They can easily use you because you don't have power. You don't have power. When you have power, anything that is connected to you, the devil fears. As soon as they say, one day, one of my great mentors, late Archbishop Pensy in Dawosa, they went to touch one of his church. He went to do a crusade in one village in Nigeria. And they killed one of his members. He went there and asked that the chief should report. The chief didn't report. Then he said, I give you all three days. From the chief to all his children, everybody will start dying. Oh, as if it is magic. Everybody was dying. They had to go and come to the archbishop and plead. They said, on condition, we have to establish a church in that village. <laughs> and all of you here, you become members. <laughs> that is the only way we can deliver you. <laughs> oh, if you want to read some of this, read this book, Fire in His Bones. Archbishop Benson, that was a fire in his bones. That is the book. Read it. If Archbishop Benson, that was alive, this nonsense in Nigeria would have stopped long ago. I'm not lying to you. It would have stopped long ago. This is a man that was in his house and armed robbers entered his house with a gun. He went to his wardrobe and asked his wife, Give him my Bible. To the Bible and went there, said, Hush up! And all the arm robbers left their hands. Say, give you, lift your hands up. Say, I, I. <laughs> I give my life to Jesus. I give my life to Jesus. And then they left. Later, the arm robbers said, when they saw the Bible, they didn't see Bible. They saw a machine gun. He, he took his Bible. He believed that he took his weapon. Is the Bible. He just said, my, give me back. <laughs> Somebody say, power. I'll continue. Um, the, um, Romans chapter 1. I am not ashamed. When you are ashamed of the gospel, you can't have the power of the gospel. The power is in the gospel. It's not in theology. What is the gospel? The gospel is this. The birth, the life, the death, the barrier, and the resurrection fivefold. These days we can't tell people about the death of Jesus. We don't talk about the blood. Come to Jesus and you break through in 24 hours. You see, God breaking you through in 24 hours is not his problem. But you going to hell is his problem. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. But have what everlasting life. The priority of God is not you getting twins. That one is nothing. It's the life 
of somebody going to hell. So many Christians are ashamed. That's why we don't have power. I used to work in protocol. And one day, I went to preach at Christian Methodist Secondary School in the morning. Morning devotion, Wednesday morning. When I came, I was late. My shadow is the Holy Ghost that took over. I was in charge. There was this lady who, is a, who was a Sunday school in a mega church now in Ghana who has destroyed me to everybody. Hey, me to have a Christian song. Me to have a Christian song. What, what is this? You say you're a Christian and you always come in late. Me to have a Christian song. By the time I arrived and I heard some, how I heard the song, the mouth turned that way. Now, no cheers. So when I came to her, I tell him, I said, what did you say? She can't talk. The way people were suffering, sometimes, you see, when you, when, when you walk in power, eh? when you walk in power, people are, are at your mercy. I have stopped cars before. Car. Oh, do you remember? You, when we were working here, articulator came to where he was misbehaving. I locked his engine. For two, three months, he thought it was powerful. They brought all kinds of mechanics to fix the car. He couldn't fix. So he went to Malam and told me to come and apologize. When he came, I said, I released the car. Go. Now he went. Because you see, some of you, the only place you would love to show that you are a Christian is Sunday. When you have been coming, because of shyness, you don't have a Bible like this you have ever held. Some of you, you only have Bible on your phone. There is nothing to show in your area that you are a Christian. You are shy to tell somebody you go to bridge. So Sunday morning, the when we are coming, they think you are going to buy beans. You tell them, I'm coming. <laughs> then they say, at these days, when you go to buy beans, you, you say, they're lying. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why these women, people, they start buying things like that. Sunday morning, the people where they want buy beans, they, they shock self. <laughs> you, they shock. Oh, amen. amen. At your work site, nobody knows you are a Christian. That's why you not get promotion. Because anywhere you are ashamed of God, he cannot reveal his power. Because let me tell you, when they are attacking you and they know you are a Christian, God must vindicate you. Because if he doesn't vindicate you, somebody there will think, if I serve God, I will lose. But when you don't let people know that you are a Christian, when you get to the office, ah, when you sit down, sit down, and sit down you open your Bible. God, I thank you for this. Say, yes, what is this? Hey, these people, this so called Griffin, let them try you and see. Let them try you and see. Some say, power. power. Now, for you to walk in power, you don't need to be ashamed. On the street, in a bus, in a taxi, at work, at home, in your neighborhood, in your football, whatever. Those days, it was easy to see a Christian. Because when you see a Christian, he's carrying Bible. Or anything, they do sign of the cross. These days, even Muslims do some. You too, where are you going? Uh-huh. Okay, as for offering, it's okay. I'm not ashamed. I'm, not ashamed. I'm telling you, those days you see people, you go to a, these days you go to somebody's house. You don't even, there's nothing to show that this person is a Christian. First you go, Christ is the head of this house. The unseen guest at every meal. This one, who is your guest? This one, who, who, who this time nothing shows. Go to um, I don't want to mention shops. Go to some of the supermarkets. As you enter, you see their gods there. I don't want to mention names because I will be promoting them. 
Go to this multi supermarket. You go and buy anything there. Two days it is bought, but you always go. You go there, they are burning incense, burning candles. You, you say you are a Christian, you are ashamed. Oh, amen. amen. I can't hear you. Amen. amen. Look at some say, Are you shy? Are you shy? God will shy you. Will From today, amen. any problem that comes in your locality, God will use you to solve it. Amen. I said, God will use you to solve it. Amen. I said, God will use you to solve it. Amen. Somebody came to tell me from Malam, where are you? we used to have a church that. And old, this lady has stopped coming to church. That the son was dying from symptoms of leukemia or something. So at first of America, they came to tell me. I said, okay. Then I said, call me Clement. I don't need to go. I said, Clement, go to the hospital and pray. The child is recovering. I don't need to go to Malam. When Clement is preaching, you can't preach the gospel and not have power. Well, let me tell you this. The Bible says, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. The next thing that follows is that you word, you will speak in new tongues. Tongue speaking. You will cast out devils. Give me Matthew 16, 16. Look at this. Which devil have you cast out so far? Let me tell you something. There is one thing for a, a pastor to cast out a devil from you. But it's another thing to cast the devil yourself. Because if your, if your pastor casts a devil from you, it means that you must always rely on your pastor to survive. But when you have matured enough, give me from verse 15, if you have matured enough to be casting them out, when you are passing, they say, huh, you come on. I remember one day we were doing a crusade in Ebri. I'm talking to you about power. And a fetish priest came there and said that we can't hold a crusade. Amen. Amen. And I said, we'll hold the crusade. We we're doing it in front of the palace. And he said that he mentioned names of some men of God. All of them, their churches have collapsed today. Who have come there and their crusade didn't work. Well, we did the crusade. In the middle of the crusade, it started raining. The instrumentalists who didn't know me started parking. I said, dare not. Dare not. Now, I did a circle. It rained in the whole library. When we were holding the crusade, it didn't rain. So people in the town, we ran to where we were holding the crusade. Now, who, no, this is not a miracle. Then a fetish was still standing there. I said, by the God I serve, the Bible says, he make a divineness mad. For divining to bring this rain, you go mad. He started laughing at me. The following morning, when I was leaving the town, look at him also sleeping. The man was mad. That was the crusade. They brought somebody with elephantiasis. The leg was swollen. See, that frustrated the token of life and make a diviners mad. Anybody that is using divination against you, if you preach the gospel, may the person go mad. I say, may the person go mad. I say, may the person go mad. Some of you, the way you preach Bassa and Chelsea, if I preach Jesus, You preach pastor. Mm. I was telling some people. I use you as an example. You, you. If you go for evangelism, instead of you sticking to evangelism, you see a person with no car sticker. I say, do you have insurance? <laughs> you have missed it. You don't go talk about insurance. That was not the reason why you went. You are talking with somebody. You, you go winning so you see the lady now say, are you married? <laughs> I don't want to mention anybody's name. I don't want Wahala. <laughs> say from today, 
As I preach the gospel, I will turn wise men backward. I will make diviners mad. And I will frustrate the talkings of liars. Say, I will frustrate the talkings of liars. Me, I don't struggle. If you lie against me, I won't talk. The gospel will speak for me. If you lie against me, I won't talk. If you ask me, it's true. I say, I don't know. Recently, somebody nearly died. Had to intervene. Because I said something in this church. And the person went to say it in the political field somewhere. A man. I said, God, intervene. If you want to say it, say it the way I said it. Don't say it your own way. Where should I go? Where, where was I? Some say power. power. I don't even want the power. You go to a hairdressing salon. They want to put snake hand into your head. As soon as the hand is coming, say, hey, your hand will catch fire. They didn't tell you where. All of a sudden, the person moves the hand. The hands are bent. I've seen it live. I've seen it live. Members testifying. I went there. Saloon. The person was putting the hand into my hand and he said, fire caught up and bent down. And ladies, all the hand became black. And I've also seen church member who also went to a hairdresser who put their hand into somebody's hair and the hand became black. Because the other one's hair was snake. See, who bought three say, I say, Hey, don't sleep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God give you an occasion to preach the gospel. Amen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach insurance, preach housing, preach how to win a boyfriend. How to get a girlfriend? No. How to get a job? <laughs> Preacher to play instruments. No. Preacher to go to church. No. 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 Let me tell you this. If the gospel is preached, nobody will tell you to come to church. You, you will go to church because you want fueling. No, but no fuel station tells you to come to the first station. Master, if you don't have fuel, you will go. <laughs> You'll be driving and your tank says, do, do, do. if you feel your car will not go, you will take a gallon. Go and buy and come and pour back. Because you know that you must be Go and preach the gospel to every creature. Someone say every creature. Every Let me, if you can't, if you don't get human means preach to God. I used to do that. I said, anybody who would chew this fowl will be born again. I sanctified this fowl. I said, oh yeah, I've done it to plantain too before. I pray when I didn't have souls to lay hands for them to fall. I was laying hands on plantain. I walk in the bush. Receive it. Receive it. Practice makes man perfect. The plantain was multiplying. I, have I told you the story about the woman who resurrected her? How many of you remember that story? Oh, a lot of you don't. A woman heard me preach as in one of my book, Charismatic Revolution, that the Bible says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. She had taken care of this fowl for Christmas. <laughs> She's taking it a whole year. And a day or so to Christmas, this fowl was dead. She came back. The woman works at GBC. She, I don't know why she has even stopped. One day I let her come and testify here. She's in my mom's church. She looked at the fowl with ants all around the fowl. Then she remembered that we are prayed over oil. He said, you anoint with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. He poured oil on the fowl, said, the Holy Ghost will come on all flesh and the fowl woke up and shook itself. <laughs> Someone say, power. power. 
I didn't hear you say power. I didn't hear you say power. I didn't hear you say power. Shout power, 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 power. Every creature means small boy, small girl, old man, old woman, young, old. The only one that can hear gospel is those who are dead. As long as you are breathing in and out, you are a potential candidate. I can see candidates in your house. I can see candidates in your area. I can see your friends, their candidates. And the, fun, the funniest thing I've seen it before is when you preach before you say that I go to church. Master, church doesn't save anybody. When I meet people and say that I go to church, I ask them this question. Do you have the Holy Ghost? Do you have power? There's a pastor, I'm sure. He, he's a pastor of Peace Chapel. The UK branch. Years ago, I used to drink and smoke with him. Beach party. We go swimming. I even have pictures of we swimming at Sun Lodge. And those were the days we drink punch and we dance with women now all night long. And one day, I came and I told them that I was born again. And they laughed at me. Then they said, I show me that you are born again. And that was so embarrassing. I couldn't show anything. All I said, I'm born again. Then I remember I went to do three days dry fasting. And I came down. When I came, I entered into their house. They have a name they call me, so they gave me the fans. I lifted up my hands. I took the fans. When I got there, I said, I have Holy Ghost. So what is that? I said, Have you seen the pastors who throw their hands and pull forward down? He said, All of it is as he said, you see, when the pastor throws the cloth, they spray things inside. So when they throw, then the scent will put you down. Then he said, when they lay hands to they squeeze your brain. So when they squeeze your brain, then your brain will defreeze. And then you go down. Some of them also slap you. So out of shock. <laughs> you go down. They say some to they spray it in their hands. And it is so thick. So when they do this, people go down. I said they should smell my hand. They said there is none. I said they should smell. They said there is none. I said, we see. Come and show them. They were all down. The uncle, who was a stunned Muslim, who used to work at Egypt Air, came over to meet all his niece and things and nephews. Down. Walked me out of the house. Carried the children and me back to Nigeria. Because we are from Nigeria. But that boy, today is a pastor. Because what shakes Muslims? That is why in our churches these days, pastors, we are not preaching gospel. That's why people are going to all these fake pastors for power. That's why people are going to shrines for power. Because they don't believe that you can have the power. You know why me, I believe I'm not dying soon. And nobody around me will die. Because I will teach you how you can die. You can be a gospel preacher. I repeat it and die before your time. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. People say Paul them is that well, they stoned Paul and they assume him as dead. When they left, he woke up. But as for Stephen, they stoned him and he died. Even though Stephen preached the gospel, he didn't preach it like Paul. Paul was talking one day. There's no disciple who went through trouble than Paul. He said in hunger, in fasting, in shipwreck three times. Why? They tie Paul's hands and said, Paul, this time you are going, you'll be jailed. You'll be jailed. They will, they will arrest you. He said, okay, I hear. He still went. 
That's why Paul said to live is Christ and to die is gain. Why? Because if he dies, he's going straight to heaven. If he live, it is because of Christ. I live for Christ. Who do you live for? Some of you, the reason why you think God shouldn't die is because of your boyfriend. So you are praying, oh God, protect this, my girl, from me. So I marry her. Nonsense. Oh God, keep this man because he's my future husband. I say your face has changed. That's why God must protect. Oh, amen. amen. Even my little girl, I'm teaching her how to win souls. Yes. That's why after church, I give her toughest to share. It's the road. She must win it. You must become responsible. Work out your own salvation. You must become responsible for your own salvation. You must secure yourself in the Lord personally. Nobody should do it for you. Yes, you must have a pastor, but nobody should secure your salvation. You must work it out yourself. Preach the gospel to every creature. 16, go. He will believe and is baptized shall be saved. He who believe, he who does not believe will be what? Condemned. Next one. And these signs will follow them that believe. You are chasing signs. You are chasing it. But you see, when you preach the gospel, these things follow you. In my name, they shall cast out demons. Ask somebody the way demon you cast before. My brother. Which demon have you cast out before? Which pastor should I go to power to cast a demon of poverty from me? Come on, stop that nonsense. Look at someone say, that devil will leave my house today. Because I am a preacher of the gospel. I believe the gospel. How many of you believe that Chelsea is a good team? How many of you believe it is Bassa? How many of you still have hope in Arsenal? How many of you still preach Arsenal? You tell people about them. I'm not still believing in House of Folk. I shall take a talk. Only that day. Only Only Rosalinda. If you go and see people talking for only that day. And they are fighting, you know. How many of you have seen these people who are fighting over TV before? But they can't do same for Jesus. Say, I cast out devils. One day, my little girl came to me and said, Daddy Kakai. I said, Who is teaching you this Kakai thing? I said, Era, when they say Kakai, say, In the name of Jesus. Say, it, Let me hear. She said, In the name of Jesus. I said, Good. One day she came to me and said, Daddy Kakai. I said, what did I tell you to say? He said, I'm coming. I followed her. He said, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Don't tell Kakai. Kakai is nothing. In my name, they shall cast out what? I can't hear. They shall cast out what? Yes. You tell me there are demons in your house. They are this thing in your house. They are this thing in your house. You need to have the ability to cast out those demons. You get up in the morning. There is no where there is food to eat. You are afraid. You cast out the fear. You don't need to call a pastor. They shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. A person who works in power, a sign of power is that you cast out demons, you speak in new tongues. 
They say when you speak in tongues, it is fake. Have you seen fake thing working before? Master, fake currency can't buy anything. So you go out and they'll make you speak in that tongue. They will teach you tongues. We don't teach tongues. It's a gift. And when we speak it, we get inspired. It has been proven medically that those who speak in a lot of tongues don't fall sick. And if they fall sick, they get healed early. Google it. Go to YouTube and find out. It is believed that those who speak in tongues, their brain is sharper than those who don't speak in tongues. Google it or go to YouTube. The videos are there. Medical research. They will take up serpents. These are days when pastors can tell you that I see a snake chasing you. And you say, it's not true. And in the night, they will send a dwarf to put a snake in your room. And you will get up and see a snake. You call the prophet and say, hey, Tofu, the snake has come live. Say, but I told you. You know what? Take 2,000 Ghana cities and bring it to me at this junction. You will meet a madman there. Give it to him and go back. By the time you arrive, the snake is gone. You take the 2,000 and the dwarf will take the thing out. But you let that snake appear in my house. I heard your wife nearly got bitten by a snake and you couldn't bite her. And we'll talk about that one later. At airport. How can an airport bag contain a snake? It wasn't in a bag. A bag. She's part of our center. She can't be bitten by a snake. One day, one day Paul was holding a stick. He sent a stick to the fire. He turned to a snake and beat him. Everybody thought he was dead. He shook the snake off. He went ahead and ate. He didn't take anything. He didn't die. And the people feared Paul that day. They said he was a god. Why did they think he was a god? Because for a snake to bite you, and you can still survive. Because there is a blood in you that is more potent than the blood of a snake. Those days, there was, there's a story, I think, in South Africa where some sickness came, like the way you say Ebola and Co. It was killing people. And there was a man of God who was praying for people and they were not getting it. So they decided to test him. There was an argument. So this man took some of the saliva and put it in his mouth. Nothing happened to him. Ah, so they said they don't understand. So they put the virus in his hands. And they put a mic. Go and Google it. It's all, all on the net. They put a microscope to examine the hand. And they saw the viruses dying in his hands. Look, anything you will do to become better, Satan will not allow you to do it. He will not allow you. That's why some of you are even by central leaders, but you never want a soul, not even a go coach. If it comes to corning girls, you can corn. And if they drink anything deadly, look, me. We sent it, but they were telling me. I, said, I don't know what I do. But Master, me, if you give me demonic food, I won't eat. But if I eat, I will run. And everything will pass. Oh, wow. It won't stay. If like try. Oh, they bring us demonic. I remember when we were in Malam, a lady brought us yam. Because he heard me preach to say I like yam. And when he brought the yam, I left the yam there to the yam go rotten or something. In my house, the lady stopped church and met somebody like that and told them that me, I gave Pastor Yam, he didn't eat. I've stopped church. How did this lady know that I didn't eat? One day, there's a lady, she brought me cake. 
I didn't eat the cake. She also came to me angry. Special cake I've done for you. You've not eaten. It's still in the fridge in your house. Why? She has also stopped church. Massa, I remember when I was young, my mom was in the US. Somebody did a papansa, only a papansa. Do you know a papansa? With a car on it, design. And my mom called from the US and said, Don't eat this food. The following day, the whole food has become black like charcoal. We had learned it because when we were growing up, people tried to poison us through milk. And my mom, we took it and we nearly died. So since then, we feared God. <laughs> I remember, and some of you gossip, go and say it. Me and some people, including Pastor Dave, we went to eat at Castle. Castle, Castle, those days, Castle. Two people got poisoned. Me and Pastor David, we didn't have any same things to today. The food, the way we ate. <laughs> Pastor David, do you remember? It was bread and something and tea. Oh, we ordered for more. We'll try tea. We'll, we'll try. One man, one of them packaged his own. That man was at Unum Whiskey. He was not born again. Unum Whiskey. And smoked than him. The guy took his own home the following day. It has turned to charcoal. He said he's too drunk to eat. So when when the drinking goes, then he will eat. So when he woke up and the thing has become black, then he called his other friend and said, Ah, have you eaten the thing? It's poison. You know. The guy was suffering. Me and Pastor David, we didn't even know. <laughs> We thought that as high level of presidency, that one day everything is protected. You shall eat any deadly thing, and it will, shall no means hurt you. And they will lay hands on the sick. They will lay hands. Look, if you are if you are a Christian, and you can't pray for the sick. Please, you're born again. It's born against. Idahosa, the late, became born again and was reading this scripture. They said they shall raise the dead. His pastor preached and he said they shall raise the dead. Assemblies of God Church. They shall raise the dead. When he finished the church, he went to the pastor and said, Pastor, you mean Jesus said if we preach, can raise the dead? The pastor said, yes, the pastor, do you believe? He said, no, it's Jesus who said it. <laughs> you know what he did? He put his Bible under his armpit. Read the book fire in his bones. Went around the whole of the town. Is anybody dead here? Is anybody dead here? Looking, he got into a house. They said, somebody died. He said, thank you, Lord. Praise God, I've gotten one. He said, let me see. He raised the dead in that house. And that day, there was a woman in that house who was very, very educated. They fell in love and they are married to a bit. The woman is Margaret Idahusa. He married a man who had never stepped in school. Idahusa was the man who, the first time he wore shoes, he was 14 years. And that one was because he was working in a shoe factory. <laughs> Someone was a power. Say, I will lay hands on the sick. Please, they didn't say Yaleo. They didn't mention Apostle. They said, and they. Are you part of those people? Yeah. Are you part of those people? Yeah. I said, are you part of those people? Yeah. Ah, we're playing football. I had football lessons. Now, they are no more here. We play football. They have a match. They'll come and tell me that. What is wrong? My leg is broken. I said, ah, and you have a match. Come. I'll lay hands. Their leg will straighten. They'll go and play. I'm not remember right in church, right in church. I'll just lay hands because the recovery of the sick is a sign that you walk in power. Someone say, I want power. I want power. Ha! 
Ah, he's keeping lay hands. Power. <laughs> Look at someone say to you, tell me the truth. Do you have power? And you are lying. I'm working in power. I'm working in miracle. Stop lying. Say from today, when I lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. One day I went.